it's been a few months since you filmed. I asked the question, how are you, as in when you first left the show? And today as we speak, how are you? Oh, of course. Like, when I first did this, like, it was like one nightmare after another. My fiance noticed that I was very, a lot more antisocial than normal. And I was like, look, I'm super anxious because I don't know what they're going to do with my filming. I said a lot of dumb things in the confessionals. I'm pretty sure they're going to put, I was like, no, knowing these TV shows, I was thinking like, oh my God, they're going to make me look absolutely stupid on TV because they told me in at the confessional, okay, pretend like you got the platinum ticket and like be, ooh, like all that. And I'm thinking, I didn't, but that's not going to happen. And they're like, but we still want you to do it. So I'm thinking they're going to put that plus me failing my audition. And then, you know, like the super confident guy going in and fucking up. That's, that, that's what I was imagining that they're going to show. And I'm just like stressed that I'm like, I'm like, what if I become like a YouTube meme? What if I go viral on Reddit for all the wrong reasons? Like, this is not what I want. And I was telling him, I'm like, what I did at the audition was nothing like what I'm capable of. And he's like, oh, no, don't worry. People are going to go on your Instagram and and they'll, they'll see these things and um, they'll see your videos and they'll know that that was not you at your best. And he was trying to comfort me, but it was it was keeping me up. Like Christmas time was tough. Like that Christmas was like, didn't feel like Christmas. All I'm thinking is like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what are they gonna air in two months? You know, I'm just thinking it's gonna air in March or February. And um, the, the publicist team was like, oh, we'll let you know when you're getting aired, which by the way, they never got back to me on. I met Keelan, the one that sang um, Don't Call Me, her original song. And she was like, oh yeah, I saw you like for like, 30 seconds that's how i found out that i got it aired and uh eventually my guitarist um so i have a band and um uh, my guitarist he he was watching it because he was so interested in trying to see what i was doing and he's like why'd you sing that song and i'm like because they made me because you know he's heard me live before like because he plays with me and he's like out of all the songs that's the song they made you sing and i'm like mm-hmm that's what they made me sing. And it's like, no wonder they said no. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, they wouldn't let me sing my second song and everything. So, so it, it, it's, it, it does take a toll on your mental health because it's just stressing you out. You're just thinking about what they're going to edit, what they're going to edit, like, how are they going to portray you? And even after it's aired, it's still kind of hard. Cause like, you know, growing up, I was the one that always got picked on for, you know, I was the, um, when you're queer and you're short and you're like the little kid in school and you're the fat kid in school and people kind of make fun of you. I think because of that, like, I have a lot of social anxiety and that's kind of what the story they used to pitch me on Idol and all. That was the story they pitched on Idol. You know, when you deal with things like that, uh, now I'm thinking, oh my God, people saw that less than perfect audition. It was on, it, it was on national television. Now if you go on YouTube and you look up unsuccessful auditions of 2023, you're gonna see me. And I'm just thinking, someone is gonna see this. Someone is gonna notice me. Someone's gonna recognize me, and I'm gonna be so uncomfortable with it. So like when I leave the house, I'm like, I always have this thing in the back of my mind saying. Oh my God, someone's going to recognize me and I'm going to look stupid. Someone's going to recognize me and I'm going to look stupid. It, it's gotten to the point where I'm like wearing a hoodie, trying to like cover myself. I'm wearing sunglasses to cover my face. You know, I don't want people to kind of recognize me. And I think it's going to take a little bit of time for me to get over it. Um, obviously, being on, being on your podcast and kind of uh, telling the full story kind of... Uh, puts things into perspective for people that may have seen me. And I, I think more people need to come forward with these things. Whether it was successful or not, I mean, good on the people that were successful. Like that, it, it was, it, it, you know, but I'm going to say it was never, but it was never about the singing talent, you know. It was about, do you fit the, the American Idol image? Do you fit what we need for the show? And, you know, um, as Luke Bryan said, you know, he was like, I don't know if 
uh, they're gonna vote for uh, you know uh, uh, Asian. Uh, uh, what do you say? I don't know if people are gonna vote for an Asian jazz R and B singer. I think it was. I don't. I don't think it's for the show. And your voice is not really there. It's it's not as good. It's kind of terrible. Uh, you know, when you when you say things like that, I'm I I know where I stand in the music industry. I know what I'm capable of, and you know, when you have someone like Luke Bryan say that, it's like I you know, you're a country artist. I I don't do country, so I guess, you know, your taste and my taste is completely different. And he, you know, like I I think about it, I'm like, yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense because a lot of the voters are, you know, southern southerners like if you look at where the votes come from they 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 you know a lot of american idol votes do come from that part of the country thank goodness a lot of my peers in jersey are like american idol that show's still on <laughs> they don't even know that they don't even know that thing is still uh on tv i guess that gives me a little bit of comfort knowing that the people that i'm surrounded by don't really watch it but you know i i do go to texas once in a while and it was very uncomfortable because the day after my audition aired um, someone did recognize me at a restaurant and it was, I didn't know why they recognized me, but they're like, oh my God, I saw you on TV. I'm thinking like, I don't, but then like, I've had other things that have been aired on TV. So I'm thinking like, uh, could have been something else. I guess it was an idol. Like I, and they were supposed to let me know if it airs. And I think she must have recognized me from idol that that has to be it because i kind of went back and i'm thinking wait a minute i never i was never aired on any other american program except american idol were you on other shows outside of the us yes i have been i i really don't know if i can find a rerun for it but um i have tried out for other other shows before when you when you audition for these shows outside of the country you have to think about visas and residency requirements and none of those panned out the way i wanted it to pan out um the visa requirements never really worked so they just aired an audition and then poof that's it and then they kind of explained it away saying that um that due to visa requirements and resident requ res residency requirements some contestants were eliminated on that basis yeah so i know what was portrayed on idol was not a, a good reflection or a good image of what i am as an artist, I've had people already kind of tell me, oh, you're just you're just saying all these things because you're mad you didn't get the three yeses. And I'm like, look, <laughs> it's nothing to do with that. Just because, you know, I didn't get three yeses doesn't mean I'm not going to speak on what actually happened and what the truth is. Um, and it's not like I'm the only one saying this, right, Bennett? So there's... Uh, plenty of other contestants who have said, "Oh, I was railroaded by the by the by the shows, and they kind of made me look stupid on TV." You know, and it's true. Like you look at some of these contestants that were eliminated or they were made fun of, and you look them up on YouTube and look them up on other platforms, and you're like, "Oh shoot, they're great!" Like I don't know why they made them uh, so look so stupid. I guess like my image is a little bit funny and could be a little comedic so they figured maybe we'll just make him a joke and i think that is kind of what happened um I, this is only speculation at this point but uh it certainly turned me off from tv it sounds like part of why you're doing this is because you want other people who either are thinking about going on the show or other people who have had similar experiences to maybe either know they're not alone or again for people thinking about it to kind of have some preparation from someone who's actually done it and been there right right and i and i want people to know what they're going up against right one it's never about the talent you could be the best singer in the world and you go on the show and if they don't like you or they don't like your image or they don't like your uh, even if they don't like your your stage name don't make fun of you and you'll be the butt of the joke for the rest of the season right if you don't have a story, if you don't have a saw, I mean, this whole season, like I, I, I only watched um, the beginning because I knew that I wasn't going to get aired in the beginning. So I watched a couple of episodes. They showed uh, William like, uh, yeah, some of the stories are legitimate and they kind of have this heartfelt feeling. And then some of them seem very forced, right? They seem like they kind of forced out this, this story out of them. And I'm like, look, it, it's not, it's not about the talent because if it was, 
if it was only about the talent, you would see more amazing artists go on these shows. But the reason why they turn turn around and say, I'm not going to do this is because they know that this is a possibility. So if you're serious about a music career and you're thinking American Idol or The Voice or all these things are a way to achieve fame, you'd be very wrong. <laughs> it's It's good. Like I'm not gonna lie, it's good. Um, it's a good way to advertise yourself, uh, put yourself out there. But it's not the way to achieve stardom. Uh, it's just a TV show. Uh, if anything, I would call it a TV show about a singing competition rather than a singing competition with a TV show aspect. It's like the other way around. There is a lot of acting involved, so if you can't act, I would not do it. Um, cause it it's very hard. Like right now, like I'm, I'm supposed to be looking at the camera, but I can't even do that because I'm not used to speaking to a camera. But that's all of us. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm just normal. If you ask me to sing so and so song, yeah, I could pull it off if I with enough practice and you know having the right mic and having the right environment and knowing the words. But you throw me into a situation where I don't know what the heck I'm doing and I'm getting eight. Uh, two, three hours of sleep every night and, you know, having to sit around for 18 hours before I get to sing, like, yeah, I like guess you're not going to sound amazing. Nobody is. You know, you could, someone like Whitney Houston, like the greatest singer in the world, Celine Dion, like they're going to sound like absolute crap if you put them through things, something, some, something crazy like that, you know? The amount of stress level that you're going to go through if you go to these shows, it's, it's, it's not for everybody. So... I just want everybody to know that if you do think about these shows or any any young person that's considering going on this show to think twice before you do. Think maybe 10 times, maybe 20 times. Think on think, think on it before you do it because this is forever. Like my my audition is going to be on YouTube on that YouTube account for the rest of my life. If anything it probably wasn't that bad and not that good that nobody's going to remember it. And shockingly, even even my uh, casting producer had no idea that this was gonna happen. Like he, the the one that reached out to me on Instagram, he was like, "I had no idea they were gonna make you look that stupid on TV." And I was like, he was he was a little bit apologetic about it. And I was like, "No, nah, it's, I, I mean, he he might have known. I don't know, but it almost looked like he didn't know that that was gonna happen." And he was like, on to the next, you know, it's not the end of the world, you know, it's, you'll, you'll find something. And I'm thinking, you know, like, you know, despite Luke Bryan saying things like, oh, you sound awful and, you know, I don't think America's going to enjoy your singing at all and all that. And What was the deal with Luke's hamstring? Oh, Luke's, Luke's hamstring. Okay, so Katy Perry told me, oh, because they, they both gave me a standing ovation, Lionel and Katy, strangely enough. And Luke didn't get up and he was just smiling and just kind of like doing that. And Katy Perry was like, oh yeah, Luke hurt his hamstring and he can't get up. So I'm like, okay. Now, do I believe it? I don't. Because after my audition, they saw another contestant for the night and then they called it the end of the night. And then they had us go all the way to the lobby to film us on the red carpet. And I noticed they had Katy Perry and Luke Bryan and Lionel Richie walk out. Luke Bryan walked perfectly fine. He did not have anything wrong with him. So I don't believe a word of that. It was like a weird cover up, like an unnecessary explanation for something I didn't really care for. Oh, uh, what's, there's a couple of other things that they said. Uh, Luke Bryan mentioned that I had an Asian accent when I sing, which, I was like, which he was like, you know, I don't know if America's going to like that. La, la, la. I might have a, a Korean accent here and there. I mean, I'm bilingual, so it's kind of a bilingual problem. Um, going on trilingual because I'm trying to learn Spanish for my fiance. Do you have any other memories of just being with the contestants in the audition? Was that at least partly a positive experience? We were we were just texting each other or messaging each other, and we were like, "What did they do to you? What are you filming?" La la la. la. Like, what did they tell you? La, you know, we're just going back and forth about it. And I was like, "If you don't have to tell me, don't tell me." But then, you know, I just want to know like, where are they taking you? Like, I, like I wanted to compare what they're compared to other contestants, and 
They also had WhatsApp group chats. They were just group chatting each other, trying to figure out like what is going on, who's going through, and who's not, and what do you know about the other contestants? And what I've come to realize is they're they like to stir up drama. Um, so they'll like say say oh this consent this contestant said this about you and this contestant said that about you and they'll compare notes and they're like I never said that you know because they're still talking through social media or through text message or through a WhatsApp group chat and it's so funny that they're able to figure out that the producers are creating drama by saying hey this is what this person is doing and this is what this person is doing and you know kind of create fake drama that doesn't exist because the contestants will speak to each other like wait i never said that well who told you that well this guy this producer from this um this guy told me this and it's like well i never said that and it's like we start we started bonding over it and i'm like i never said that what, is, what are you talking about <laughs> so like they're trying to get us to like already like bef before the audition even was filmed they were trying to already get us to like pit against each other I get that it's your job, but if, if, if that was my job, I would quit, you know, like, why would I, how, how, how is that ethical? That's my question. It's dishonest. It's, uh, it's cruel. Actually, it's, you're, you're playing with someone else's mental health, right? These other contestants now are thinking if they didn't compare notes then, or didn't speak to each other, they wouldn't, they wouldn't know what, what, what was really said. They're just going to actually believe what they're hearing. And they're going to be like, one person's gonna get upset because someone chose this song and someone did this and someone did that and someone said this about this person and they're already starting to like you know i i i i sensed it immediately and i was like i jesus christ <laughs> it sounds like a sitcom on tv <laughs> uh, yeah there's a lot of stuff going on upstairs. no worries i enjoy it what are they doing up there <laughs> Oh my God! This is this is what this is what happens with my fiance's family. They're they're so big. Their whole family. I love um, it. Yeah, and you know the other the other thing is is I kind of think like because the I remember when when they were setting up the story and stuff. They wanted my fiance to come because my fiance is the reason why I started singing. So, but then he couldn't pass his COVID test, so he couldn't come. He wasn't sick. But he didn't pass his COVID test, so like he couldn't fly into this um, to New Orleans. I was the only one that was allowed to come. The story now doesn't make any sense. I figured they just kind of gave up. Big He's already started singing. Can you tell me about that? Oh yeah, yeah. So we met in 2014, and I wrote a song for him Aww. for our first uh, anniversary. And it was like, this is this is you know, please don't make me sing it. <laughs> I'm not a TV producer. Don't worry. <laughs> So I wrote this song and then he's, he liked it so much. Like I never really did anything with music. And then he finally, you know, during COVID, I, I got laid off and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he's like, why don't you just go on Reddit or you just go online? He didn't, he didn't say Reddit. He said, why don't you go online and uh, stream your singing? I think people will like it. And I'm like, you think so? And you know, I started doing that. And, um, and then one day, he had dance practice this was maybe a year and a half after covid after the vaccines came out he had dance practice he went to to the rehearsal he came back and he's like i'm really hungry so we ended up going to a diner and they were having a karaoke night and he nudges me he's like you should go out to the parking lot and sing they're gonna love you and i'm like i'm like no i don't want i don't want to do that <laughs> and that that was the catalyst that day was when i started doing it and within a year and a half, American Idol reached out to me and was like, hey, we want you to audition for the show. That's amazing that you have someone who's not only so supportive, but he pushed you. Yeah. And he, he was like, I, I came back and he was like, and he was like, I'm, you know, even, even though you got the three no's, like, you know, he's like, he's proud of me. He's like, you know, you went from just, just singing in the shower and just kind of singing to yourself and just writing stupid songs to post on youtube you know like I, I sometimes i would do parodies like stupid parodies and post it on youtube or post it on i think the youtube channel got taken down because of copyright i was the type that was like you know i just want to focus on work focus on my studies in college just figure that out first because i wanted to have something secure before i tried to take a chance at music 
in February, I got to perform at the Poconos in front of maybe over a thousand people. I, I thought, you know, this might be proof that I might either be really good or really bad. Let's see what happens, right? So I go up there. If I if I knock this song out of the park, they're going to love it. So I went up there and sang uh, The Greatest Love of All by Whitney Houston. After the first line, everybody in the, in, in the, in the whole place are just like, whoa, what the, f what the hell just happened? It's almost more validating than whatever American Idol judges told me. The, the things that the judges said, I kind of feel like it was uh, said to me to try to get a reaction out of me or to try for, for, for television, right? So I kind of feel like it wasn't really a genuine reaction. They just said whatever they wanted to say. I experienced that and I think, you know, maybe there's, maybe there is a future for me, but it's not, it's not through a TV show. It's not through that. It, it's good exposure. Maybe some people will make a joke out of me, but you know, it is what it is. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to look back at it and just kind of laugh uh, in the near future. <laughs> not maybe, definitely. <laughs> well, we could try. <laughs> I, I try to be a little more um, realistic, right? Realistic, re realistically speaking, like, yeah, like it, if I work my ass off and do what I want to do and just really go for it, I, I could probably achieve it. But the chance of me achieving it, probably very little. But, you know, it's it. I, I try to be humble about it because, you know, if, if you go in there saying, I'm definitely going to do it with this attitude that, um, that I'm the best, you know, it, it, you, you set yourself up for failure because you don't, you, you don't want to improve. Like for me, it's always been about like me starting to sing. Like I, I, I watch back, I listen back to all my old, old recordings and I'm like, God, I'm terrible, you know, but that's just because every time I hear back, I'm like, okay, I got to fix this. I got to fix that. I got to do this. I got to do that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to improve myself constantly. And that's, that's kind of, like my mindset is like always know that you can do things better. Let's look at the definites because regardless of what happens in your music career, you have the talent. That's a TV show that you were on. Right. This wasn't your music career. This was a weird opportunity that you still learned something from and that still gave you some sort of thing that you walked away with which you're still not quite probably sure how it made maybe a positive impact on your life but you can look back however many years from now and say a they were wrong and b what why was that even why did i even let myself think that that was really the truth you know that i was that that this character that they made me out to be you know, that people at home thought that's who I was. Why would I for a second ever think that that was the truth, you know? I, I almost feel like there's going to be redemption soon. You know, I'm 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 100% certain that's going to come very, very soon. Um, Like, I, 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 I was telling my fiance, I was like, you know what? I did a little research on the judges. Katy Perry don't got a Grammy. Luke Bryan don't got a Grammy. I think I know. I think I know what the goal is going to be here. <laughs> I was jokingly telling you. I was like, "Wouldn't it be funny if I if I happen to have won a Grammy one day?" And went, you know, there was somebody who said that I sucked, <laughs> and you know, kind of like, kind of like, uh, don't say their name, but you know, um, and and he goes, "Well, you know, like it, 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 it that's redemption right there. Like if you really want it, like you'll get it." Um, you know. Looking back at my life, you know, the way I've lived my whole life, it's always been about redemption. Like me being a software engineer, this this is also another, uh, like one of those stories where like, it's a wild story about how I became a software engineer. Like I went from being a receptionist um, to, to fixing a computer system at work one day. And then I landed this job with no credentials, no degree in it. And it's, you know, it's like, if you really want it and you really want to do it, you'll you'll do it if you if you if you work your ass off. And it took me a lot of late nights. It took me a lot of uh, self studying and trying and you know taking time out of the day to just learn things. 
and I got there. So I'm thinking, if I could do that and become a software engineer, I'm pretty sure if I take what I have right now, work on it, continue uh, honing my skills, I'm pretty sure it's going to come one day. It's just, who knows? You just never know. I almost wanted to interrupt you when you were going on about the judges and the Grammys because I wanted to say, look, let's pause and put these three people who are not important to your life aside. You have spent much well-deserved time talking about the one most important person in your life right now who sees you. You are marrying somebody, and that's something coming up in your life right now. Forget about five, ten years, whatever the timeline is of your music career. This is your life we're talking about. You have somebody who loves you and sees something in you. Whether or not you saw it in yourself or whether you did or however long you've had this dream, that's what's coming up right now. Right, of course. You know, I I, I, I think about it and I'm like, I, I see what I have in my yes. life, right? I have a comfortable job. I have a fiance who loves me, who cares about my mental well-being and he's so concerned because he was, he kind of felt a little bit responsible because he was the one that was like, you know, I want you to sing because you're, you're good, great at it. Like we, we got this. And you know, like he, he's told me like every time we go to like a uh, open mic or, or you have your shows and we, you know, we see all these people that watch you that are just like stunned um, and just watching you and just, you know, like he's, he's like, if you weren't that good and if you, nobody if it were like that they would just not care and then he felt he felt a little responsible because he kind of was like well you know he was the one that was like well you never know why don't you try why don't you take the offer from america now just do it and when this all when it all went wrong he was like oh my god like i feel so bad i feel like i kind of put you in that position and i'm like no it's not it's is what it is like at the end of the day like i'm still here you know and i have you i have my my stable job if i want to do music it's not like it, it's not like the world is going to be like oh you can't do music and take my microphone away there are people that don't like like listening to lionel richie there are people that don't like listening to katie perry they don't like her music you know does she care about them probably not and it's the same thing with me it's like if you don't like my my style of music and the things that i do then cool I put myself in those people's shoes. Like, what if I was that celebrity with a $300 million net worth with these great things? Am I going to be happy? And I kind of think maybe I wouldn't be because I, you know, I'm, I'm a very private individual. So for me to be put in the spotlight and constantly be hoarded, you know, by a paparazzi, like I would probably not be comfortable with that. And I think about it, I'm like, I enjoy music, but I also don't enjoy what comes with it. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, American Idol might have opened up my eyes to that. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It's like, it's kind of taught me, you know, I like the music aspect. I like the art that's involved. I like maybe entertaining people. And I like the fact that maybe I can make people happy, but I don't like the attention that comes with it, and I don't like the the media. I don't like the inter like the um, the the uncomfortable interviews that I got like from, from the producers and stuff. I'm thinking like I don't like any of that, and I feel like I feel like I know what I want and what I don't want, and um, it's kind of opened my eyes up to it. So I'm kind of thinking maybe this is a learning experience rather than a disappointment or like a like something to look, it's not nothing to be upset about to me. It's more, it's more like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a learning experience. I'm, I'm so thankful that you feel that way because all I care about is as grateful as I am that you and everybody takes the time to come on this podcast. Even if you don't have that difficult of an experience, it's exhausting and you're exposing yourself. And I'm sure that anybody would agree on at least one thing you talked about. So you could have been like, oh no, this is just the worst thing in the world and I'm never gonna get over this. And like you said, the redemption will come. And I and I feel like it's gonna be soon. Even if it comes soon, I, I really don't think people are gonna really remember me from that audition video. I mean, it was like 
15, 20, 25 seconds. But the way people view the shows, they don't really care for the montages. I'm thinking, like, no one's going to recognize me. I mean, if they do, the cool. Like, uh, you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm kind of over it. Uh, and I, I, I'm not even hurt by the way they portrayed me or anything like that. I'm more hurt by the fact that this was the intention, right? They knew what they were going to do to me, but they still did it. And it was just like, I'm more hurt by their, their, their actions that led to that. I, I think about the producers, I'm thinking like they're sitting in a desk and they see all, they, they, they know about my anxiety. They know my social anxiety is, is really bad. They know I've been bullied in high school. And I'm thinking like, they know these facts because they told them this. And I said, if you're going to embarrass me on TV, I'd rather not be on TV. And they did it anyways, right? So I'm thinking like, there are some psychotic people out there. Like, how do you sit there and do this to somebody? And I guess what I'm grateful for is that someone at American Idol had the had the brains to say, let's not, let's not do that. You know, after they filmed everything, I think someone was like, let's not put that on TV because it's not going to make us look good. Like, this is a whole different world now. People... You know, people, I feel like, have woken up. Like, you know, like back in the day, Idol, they used to make fun of people and, you know, embarrass them on TV and stuff. But I feel like we're past that stage as as as, uh, as a society now. I feel like it's not accepted anymore, that kind of television entertainment. So I feel like someone at American Idol, someone was like, let's not put Rich K uh, having an anxiety attack on TV because it's not going to make us look good. It's going to make him look bad, but it's also going to make us look bad. So let's not do that. I'm glad someone had, I'm pretty sure someone had the brains and the, the thoughtfulness behind it and said, let's not. And um, I'm grateful for that. You used the phrase waking up earlier when you were talking about people starting to realize what the show is and how so many people are being scouted just because not many people are even that interested in trying out anymore. And Personally, as a viewer, when I see those montages, I am very aware that whatever they're cutting together to make it silly or entertaining or whatever it is that they're going for is likely not what it seems. And so as much as viewers are cognizant and mindful of what it might be really like behind the scenes, even for the contestants who they make look good, there may be just as many people who aren't as gullible as you think you know they might not be looking at you and thinking oh my god he's terrible he's awful they may actually be thinking i wonder what the show did to make it look like that right i i mean i i was watching it like that because i knew like my my experience in media is i interned at fox i interned at um at cnn so i kind of know like when i was in college i was a journalism major so i kind of know what that what you see on TV is never what what actually happens, and you know even even in newsrooms where they where they talk about the news, you know like it's there's a lot of rehearsing, there's a lot of practicing and um, certain lines and stuff. Like it, what you see on TV is never what you what what it really is like. So I kind of come to the conclusion to always be skeptical of everything I see on TV. But then you know there's a lot of there's a handful of people who will take it literally and watch it for exactly what it looks like and they think that that's the truth and i kind of think about it and you know my fiance has told me well he's like that's not your audience though you know the people that are that 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 are thinking that american idol is literal and that that's that you're terrible that's not your audience so you don't even have to worry about them they make fun of you all you want. They can go on Reddit and say all those stupid things and make you sound stupid and, you know, call you delusional, call you crazy and um, say that you're you're awful and all that stuff. And I, I had a couple of people, which was shocking. Like I shared it on, I, sh I, I went on the American Idol subreddit and I was talking about like a couple of things that I experienced, but not like giving it fully away. And I guess someone went on my profile on Reddit and saw that I had auditioned for it because I posted it in a private, you know, thing. Uh, and I guess I, I guess he had access to it and he saw it and then he goes, 
you know, um, I mean, I thought it was kind of stupid. Like, I, like I don't, I don't really care. He goes, "Whoop de doo!" Someone went to American Idol, didn't make it, and he posted about it like he's bragging about it. And I'm like, it wasn't about bragging. It's more, it get, the whole post was about how, you know, how going from someone that had social anxiety to going on TV and dealing with that and just exposing myself like that. Like I, I, it was like a proud moment for me. It's almost like, Hey, I feel liberated almost like that. I don't feel anxious about being on behind the camera anymore as much as I used to like talking to people and, you know, reaching out to people and saying, Hey, let's do this or let's make this or let's talk about this. Like, I'm not anxious about it anymore. Like I, um, and in that aspect, I'm kind of proud of everything that's happened thus far. As <sighs> you should be. Well, I hope that this interview has felt easier than the interviews you had to deal with at American <laughs> Idol. Well, you know, like, because this interview is more candid, right? It's way more normal than what you see on TV. The American Idol interview was like, we're just trying to get a story out of you. And we're just going to, and if they, if you don't give them a story, then they'll make your story and they'll make you read the the words and say what they want you to say so <laughs> like the conspiracy theories that people had about american idol are actually true like when you actually go and see it and what actually happens like everything is set up and people get set up and it's all true so it's, it's hysterical well uh rich i i can't thank you enough for taking the time to share every detail and to be so candid and to really wear your heart on your sleeve and um it just it really means a lot that you took the time to not just do it for yourself but to do it for others because i think that like we said like i said earlier you know maybe it had two purposes here to express what you were feeling but to also show others who are thinking about the show or who have been on the show like hey this is my story like i said if there's anybody out there that's really looking at the show and thinking that they're going to be a superstar and they're going to be somebody big, trust and believe that this is not the way. <laughs> um, if you like TV and you enjoy being in the limelight and you think you can do it, sure, be my guest. But if you're just a musician and you're, you know, not too fond of TV and you know, there's there's a lot of other paths. Like now, like you don't even need a music producer to to uh, make music, right? If you know what you want and you have the equipment, I mean, the equipment's not even that expensive these days. You can do what cost used to cost millions of dollars at home in like maybe like a five hundred dollar budget. You really don't need a show like American Idol or X Factor or or uh, the voice to be a successful artist. You can do it at home. You can do it on your own terms uh, without being exploited by uh, a, a TV show. I am thrilled that we're actually gonna get to hear you sing as we close out here. And before we do, um, I wanna give you the opportunity to plug any social media that you'd like to or where people can stream your music or Anything else, if you have any performances, any shows? I, I don't have anything coming up right now because I'm, I'm working on my uh, album. So I'm trying to focus on that and not uh, shows this year. But if you want to keep in touch, you could always go to my Instagram at covers by Richard. Instagram is the best way to uh, follow me and learn more about me. All my Spotify stuff, everything is there. Fantastic. If you guys enjoyed this conversation... You can follow us on Instagram or TikTok at Idle and Nerd Podcast. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, wherever you may be listening, make sure that you leave us a review or however many stars you'd like. If you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment. Wherever you're listening or watching, please share with a friend who might be interested in this conversation. And um, just really appreciate you guys for listening or watching. And Rich, please tell us what you're going to be singing and what the song means to you, why you chose this song. I figured since I didn't get a chance to sing it in front of the American Idol judges. I might as well do it here. I want to do The Greatest Love of All by Whitney Houston. It, in the pre-chorus where she says, I decided long ago never to walk in anybody's shadow. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I lived as I believed. 
that's kind of been my life motto as someone that's been picked on and bullied and that kind of thing, you know. I was always in the shadow of the popular kids. I was always in the shadow of my bully. I was always in the shadow of my parents who would say, you know, why can't you be like this? Why can't you be like that? You know, compare me to other... <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very... Un, it's unfortunately a very common thing in Asian culture to be compared to a relative. Um, and it's it's constantly happened. So I, um, I remember, like, hearing the song and going like, yeah, I like this. This was like in middle school when I first heard this song. Like I didn't, like I was not exposed to a lot of music growing up. And when I started hearing all these pop songs in, in middle school and late elementary school, I was like, I like this. And I like the words behind it. And it's always stuck with me. Well, I can't wait to hear it. And Rich, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being a part of American Idol on Air. Remind us how we used to be